My name is Jay Ryan. I draw silly animals and ridiculous situations. I try to relate them to music groups and make concert posters for some of my favorite bands. I've been doing this for 16 years now. I started working under Steve Walters at Screwball Press. I was doing some freelance illustration for a friend named Andy Mueller. Andy got asked to design a poster for Super Suckers, Rocket from the Crypt, and Wesley Willis fiasco. We went and met up with um, Steve at Screwball. Basically, Steve and I hit it off. I started out over there sweeping and cleaning up screens and, and moved to helping print and printed Steve's work, other people's work, and, and my own stuff eventually. And worked with Steve for about three years before I opened my own shop called The Bird Machine here in luxurious downtown Skokie, Illinois. The company's called The Bird Machine because it was the last name left. I actually, I tried to call it the Catholic Church, and then I found out that was taken already, and then I, I tried to get IBM, but that was also taken. So the bird machine seemed like the, the right choice from the last couple names that were left. I think that there's an appreciation for this type of work and the fact that um, the images are hand-drawn, the same process could have been done the same way 50 years ago. And I think the, the finished product, there's sort of a tactile quality to it that an offset print doesn't have. There are a lot of good screen printers, and a lot of good poster makers working these days in a way that there weren't 15 years ago. The fact that anybody wants to come here and have me do work for them at this point is amazing to me. I really like the process that's associated with the way that we work. I'll work on a drawing one night after dinner, come in in the morning, get films made of, of the key plate, and then we can start printing before I've really finished designing the poster. I'm able to cut that film, burn a screen, set up the press, and start printing. And once we've got ink on the paper, I'm able to sort of decide what the next step is going to be. There's no point where I'm designing, where I go, okay, it is done. Things change during the process. The prints take left turns. Sometimes they'll get rearranged, recomposed midstream, add colors, subtract colors. I enjoy that process because I actually don't know what the print's going to look like it's finished. One of the most valuable things I learned in school was to turn off this little voice in your head that, that says, oh, well, that's a dumb idea, don't do that. Like I'd start in on, on, on a painting and I'd go, oh, this is dumb. And so I kind of got to this point where I was frozen up and I couldn't paint, I couldn't really produce much of anything. And one of my professors got me to focus on quantity over quality, draw a bunch of drawings, a whole lot of work. And then only after you've got the whole body of work done, you go back and try and evaluate it. That sort of approach, I think it's translated well to having bad ideas and seeing them through to the point where they're interesting. The addition size is influenced by what the print is that we're making. Most of our projects, we aim to have about 300 prints. A large, normal print run for us is 1,000. That kind of project comes up once a year. The difficulties in doing a larger run like that have to do with just physical constraints of working in a shop this size. All our papers are made from old paper by the French paper company. Their motto, French, as American as it gets. They're nice people. It's a 130-year-old family-owned company. They're sixth-generation paper makers. It's 100% recycled stock, acid-free, and made using hydroelectric power. feel good about using that paper. We're not deforesting Saskatchewan to make posters for Melvins. Not directly, anyway. The Melvins may want that, but I'm not going to do it for them. I think that the next threat to this process would be if one of our screen printing materials manufacturers, such as the company Ulano, if they were to go out of business and stop making Rubylith, um, that would be the next threat in the same way that I have friends who now can't get Polaroid film or now have a hard time getting two-inch audio tape for their recording studios. However, I don't see any threat to this process coming from that direction anytime soon.
And then we put the prints on the internet, sell them, and we make dozens of dollars.